I'm sure you've already heard that one of the worship leaders and songwriters for Hillsong has actually not only left Hillsong, but left the Christian faith. He basically has said it's a myth, it's made up, and there's a lot of problems with it, and he lost his faith. A lot of people have been losing their faith and leaving Christianity, and not for good reasons. So in this video, I want to talk about a few of the reasons that he gave for leaving and why they just aren't good. There are good, rational, logical reasons for being Christian, for believing in God, and for having the faith we do. My name is Brian Mercier. I'm a professional Catholic speaker, apologist, and an author. I'm the founder of Catholic Truth, which is an organization dedicated to preaching and teaching the truth of Jesus Christ and the Catholic faith and helping people to transform themselves in Christ. So, Marty Sampson, worship song writer and worship leader for Hillsong, he left his faith. Here are a few of his remarks on why he did and why I have a problem with them. He said, I'm generally losing my faith and it doesn't bother me. I'm happy now and at peace. How many miracles happen today? Not many and no one talks about it. Why is the Bible full of contradictions? Nobody talks about it. How can God send 4 billion people to hell just because they don't believe? No one talks about it. Christians can be the most judgmental people on the planet, but they can also be some of the most loving people and beautiful people. But it's just not for me. I'm not in it anymore. I want genuine truth. Not just, I believe it kind of truth. Science keeps piercing the truth of every religion. Lots of things help people change their lives, not just one version of God. On one hand, I want to shake Marty, but on the other hand, I can relate to where he's coming from because I also asked countless questions growing up. How do we know God exists for real? What about evolution? What about the Big Bang? What about these different things? Why would God send people to hell if he loves them? Why doesn't prayer always work? And many other questions. And you know what people told me? You just have to believe. It's a faith. It's a mystery. And this is what people tell you. They don't give you answers. So Marty Sampson, I doubt you will ever watch this video, but if you do, I can totally understand where you are coming from because I had the same struggles. But I also, like you, love truth and I wanna know the truth and I don't wanna believe something if it's not truth. So I spent 20, 25 years looking up all of the answers to my faith and I studied all the other religions as well, just in case. And I studied a lot of the atheistic and skeptical arguments and I studied everything, but I've come to know that the fullness of the truth is in Jesus Christ, and there are good, logical, reasonable answers that you're looking for if you desire them. Walking away from God is not going to find you the truth. God is truth. And just trying to pretend that God doesn't exist, or maybe you're dissatisfied with the faith, I can get that, but there's a lot of problems with walking away from God, and you'll never find real peace and happiness. And I'm sorry to you, Marty, if you never had that in Christianity, and if you only received cheesy answers. But the fact is, Mr. Sampson, miracles do happen today, and they happen a lot more than you might think. Sure, they might not have happened more than many, many, many ages ago, but let me ask you a question. As a culture, as people, do we have more faith now or do we have less? Is our culture following God more or are we following God less? Jesus said you need great faith to see great works. And people who have great faith, they see great works. In fact, I have a book here. There's just one. It's called Miracles Do Happen. And it's by Sister Breege McKenna. And she's a worldwide healer who goes around and heals people from things that can't be healed. I mean, she heals people from blindness and sickness, people who are deformed, and she just touches people and prays with them. Sometimes they're healed right on the spot. We're not talking about small miracles. We're talking about big ones. Mr. Sampson, you might want to look up Lourdes. Thousands and thousands of miracles are done at Lourdes all the time. Millions of people go there every year. It's the second most visited place on the planet, and 67 of those have been scientifically verified, and by over 30 physicians. Positions. These are not just like, oh, the Catholic Church saw it and believes it. No, we've had each and every one of extensively checked out. And I could go on more and more and more books 
of miracles here that actually happen. And the, it's not the fact that miracles do or don't happen. Even if miracles didn't happen, it does not mean that God doesn't exist. Perhaps it means just we don't have enough faith or God's not working in that way. But the fact is God is real and he can work in many ways if we truly believe. As far as the Bible being full of contradictions, I know people always say that, but they don't understand the Bible. One person at my restaurant said, I don't believe in the Bible. It's full of contradictions. And I said, like what? And he said, oh, um, <clears throat> well, uh, I, I'm not sure. I don't, I, I can't think of any off the top of my head. A lot of people say that, but they haven't actually studied them. And even if there are contradictions, have you studied the contradictions? Are they real contradictions or are they just differences? For example, I have a couple books here, this one and this one here. They're both by the same authors. One is, it's a huge book and it's called When Critics Ask. And it's talking about the Bible difficulties and supposed contradictions in the Bible. I also have an un, another one that says When Skeptics Ask, a handbook of Christian evidences. Both of these books, and I have a lot more on my shelves, answer the supposed contradictions of the Bible and deal with more of the difficult things that the Bible talks about that people don't understand if you don't study on a deeper level. I don't know about Hillsong. I can't speak to Hillsong. They seem like a, a lovey-dovey worship group that loves Jesus, and I don't know how studied they are. I don't know how much into apologetics they are, but if you study your faith, Mr. Sampson, I guarantee you that there are answers out there that make sense. And lastly, I can say a lot of things on this, but the whole point that science has poked holes in all the religions is not actually true. It's poked holes in a lot of the religions. It's poked holes in certain aspects of religion, and it should, because we don't want to believe superstition, so science should call out those parts of faith that are superstitious and don't make sense. But faith actually prevents science from becoming God itself and thinking it has all the answers when it doesn't. The fact is that the Catholic Church loves science. I know you're not Catholic, Mr. Sampson, but the Catholic Church loves science. And without the Catholic Church, we would not have the science that we have today. You can't have the science because the Catholic Church is the church that forwarded science for over a thousand years throughout the Middle Ages. And in fact, there are 35 craters on the moon named after Catholic priests because of their extraordinary mathematical and scientific achievements. It was the Catholic Church that actually started the university systems and made the different subjects, including science, which we studied, and to get all of the knowledge that we have today. So I can't speak for all religions, but at least for Catholics, the science and religion have always gone together. And the majority of scientists over the last 2,000 years have been Christian. They've believed in God and they've believed in science and they have not seen a contradiction. You might be surprised to know that the Catholic Church has one of the oldest and largest scientific observatories on the face of the planet because of her love for science. You also might be surprised to learn that the Catholic Church is not against evolution and evolution is not a problem when you understand the Bible correctly. The Catholic Church is also not against the Big Bang. Some people say, I don't believe in God because of the Big Bang. Well, guess what? A Catholic priest was the one who invented the theory of the Big Bang. Father George Lemaitre in 1929 was the first one to discover and outline the theory of the Big Bang. He believed in God and he was a great scientist, like most scientists down through history. Just look at George Mendel and Blaise Pascal. And in fact, one of the greatest scientists on earth right now, who even Richard Dawkins, the fundamentalist, gives crazy respect to is named Francis Collins. He's the author and founder of the Genome Project, the first one to map out the entire human genome. He's the one of the greatest scientists on earth and is a big believer in God and wrote a whole book about why he believes. Anthony Flew, the greatest atheist of the last century, converted to uh, believe in God too, and I have his book as well. And there are lots of books and there's lots of proof that show that science and religion are not opposed to each other. That's just a myth. There are so many scientists. I mean, look at the Catholic Church's list of just scientist priests. 
I mean, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds because the church is not threatened by science. Science and religion can go together and they can coexist and have coexisted since the beginning of time. So, Mr. Sampson, I know you'll probably never watch this, but if you would like, I would love to sit down with you and I would love to talk to you about any and every question you have and give you rational, logical answers and reasons for them. And we can have a great brotherly, charitable discussion, and that would be great because I'm sick and tired myself of people not giving us good answers. So, I will pray for you. I know you will return someday after your journey, and I believe in my heart, and I hope and pray, that you will be a prodigal son coming back faithful and more fervent than ever. The Catholic Church is the deepest and most logical religion on this planet with the most amount of answers, and I would challenge anybody who's struggling with faith to look up the answers with an open heart and an open mind, and you might be surprised what you come up with. I will be praying for you, Mr. Sampson, and for all of you Hillsong people, and I would be remiss if I didn't invite all of you Hillsong members to the truth, the fullness of truth that Jesus started 2,000 years ago in the Catholic Church. God bless you all, and thank you for watching. I would love to know your thoughts on this uh, topic. I would love to hear your comments down below for or against or whatever you think. Uh, and if you like this video, please share it and please like it and please subscribe and hit that nasty little bell next to the subscribe button because I don't get videos that people actually share because I didn't hit the bell. But when I hit that little bell, guess what? The videos come and I get to see the videos that I like. Also consider being a patron. We need help supporting our nonprofit ministry. We do a lot more than just YouTube. We do retreats. We do conferences. We do hikes. We do a lot of things to reach people, especially our young people, and teach them the truth. So God bless you and thank you for watching today.